we're going to talk about two of the major standards in European and Asian imports. That's ISO 9141-2 and KW2000. They're used almost exclusively for communications a scan tool. They both run at 10.4 kilobods and have two versions, a one wire and a two wire. In the one wire version, we only have pin seven used. It's the K line, which we'll explain in a little more detail. In the two wire version, we also have an L line. Now, the way these two are used, the K line is used for normal communications. And in the one wire system, it's also used for initialization, the start of communications. In the two-wire system, the L line is used for the start of communications. Now, it uses a keyword to start communications, and KW2000 is very similar, except it puts out a higher speed keyword than the ISO 9141. The KW2000 is the newest version. The message length is much longer on the KW2000. It's 255 bytes instead of the 12 bytes. So it's a newer system, and you'll see some of the vehicles going to it just prior to changing over to CAN. The 9141-2 and the KW2000 use the same test procedures. The message structure is slightly different, but the signaling is the same. This is what it looks like. It's a variable pulse width and the scan tool must be connected in order to see it. Now, we're going to stop here a second and go look at it live because I want you to get a good feel for what the signal looks like in a live video of a scope presentation. Now, notice as this pattern moves about. It's always starting at 12 volts and going down. It's a very steady signal, but it's moving. There is a burst of information like you've seen in the past. Now, this only happens if we have the scan tool hooked up and communicating. We keep repeating that, but it's very important. Remember, if you don't have communications, you can be looking at a straight 12 volt line indicating you're hooked up to the modules. Let's go diagnose these modules and use these different characteristics in a diagnostic to help us improve our situation. Let's get into some diagnosis. Some basics to remember, and we're going to harp on this and take our time here because this applies to a lot of cars. K-Line is going to be used in all your cars. doesn't matter if it has KW2000, which is ISO 14230, or if you've got 9141. You'll always have this, and in a single wire system, it will act as the data line and the initialization line. Pin 15 is not used on all vehicles. It is only used on a two-wire system to initialize communications. This is a standard that holds true. You're going to see a lot of different names. So this, while it may seem trivial to you, is important. No matter what they call it, that's what these two are. K-Line is going to be a lot of different names and we'll show you some cases. Now the scan tool must be connected communicating if you're going to see a lab scope pattern like we just looked at. Remember we're looking at communications there with the scan tool. This was added predominantly to address OBD2 laws in the United States. If you're going to do testing you're going to have to go and put your, your probes in the back of the data link connector or you're going to have to have a breakout box like we have and hook your scan tool up, program it, and start trying to talk to modules. So before you start talking, before you get it programmed, you're going to find that the signal line idles at B plus 12 volts. When it's not communicating, even though you have it hooked up, it's still going to be at 12 volts until you send that initialization keyword to start talking. Once you say start talking, the bus is going to come alive and you're going to see communications. Now, if you can't see the communications, we've got a different problem. Now, anytime we want to talk, once we get this hooked up, the scan tool or all the modules it hooked up to can talk at any time. They look at the bus and see it recessive. Recessive means it's idling. 12 volts, battery voltage, whatever you want to call it. We say 12 volts because that typically seems to be what the voltage level is. 
So any time a module sees this, it can start talking. To get access to the bus, it goes dominant, meaning it goes to zero volts. Now, while this may seem like trivia to you, let's tell you how you use dominant. 12 volts means nothing is happening. Nobody's trying to communicate. You may have no communications. Zero volts says that somebody's trying to communicate. When a module goes bad, if it goes open, it's not going to shut the bus down. You can talk with whoever's left. But if it goes to dominant and fails dominant, it's going to stay here and nobody's going to be able to talk. And that's a very definite indication of a diagnostic pattern. The start of our diagnostic, if a module hangs up in a dominant state, it'll go low and we'll have to find it. Now let's start looking at diagrams. This is called SIL on Toyota 2005 on this Corolla. This is a star configuration. We have three of our modules hooked up here coming out of a star in that shaded area. We have three mo two modules at a splice going off in different locations that are not part of the splice pack. This is the K line. This is the signal line. This is how we chase it down. If we're stuck low, we've got to go isolate all the modules, and it's going to take us five pages of diagrams to get there. This is, by the way, a two-wire system with pin 15 to initialize communications. The diagnostic pattern here, if there's something wrong with pin 15, you will never see a signal on pin 7. Now let me say that again very carefully. If there's something wrong on pin 15 and you can't send the initialization word, none of the modules will talk to pin 7. That's so important, I'm going to say it a third time. We have had to help a number of people who could not understand this point. In a two-wire system, the L line has to communicate in order to start communications on pin 7. So when you start, you start at pin 15 if you have a two-wire system. If you have a one-wire system, it's not so important. Notice that all these different names, but 7 is the K line for communications, 15 is the L line. Now that's not universal because sometimes you'll find battery voltage on 15. So you're going to have to go get a schematic like this one and see if 15 is actually used. Here's the bear in the woods we're warning you about. It's semi-universal. 15 is not universal. Know what's there. We like to have a diagram like this. This is a much easier to use. We're a big fan of Mitchell diagrams that redraw the whole thing. Now this happens to be a Nissan. Just to pick another import. 2005. K-Line is only used, it's a single wire system. Now why is that so important? Remember if we don't have a signal on 15 we will never see a signal on 7. In this case 7 is the signal and the initialization line. We harp on it, we talk about it, and we're trying to make sure you understand just how important it is to have a diagram like this to diagnose with. And the nice part about Nissan, congratulations, they call the signal K-Line, not some made-up name that somebody in Tokyo liked. Thank goodness somebody uses a convention to help the technician. Maybe there's a message here. Maybe not everybody's trying to help technicians repair cars. Who knows? But anyway, we only have two modules. We hook up, we can start communicating. We can do some testing without having to communicate. What can we do? Well, without the scan tool communicating. If you have B plus at pin 7, the bus has some continuity. We are hooked to one of those two modules because they put out 12 volts when they're not talking. Let's say it again. They put out 12 volts when they're not talking. So if we want to, we can go, look, if it's missing, we may have a different problem. Let's talk about the options. If the signal is zero, 
the bus hasn't opened or a module is pulling it low. Remember, a module goes low, pulls it low to be dominant. If it dies and shorts out, it'll pull low and nobody will be able to talk. So these are two of the failures we might be seeing, but there's some meaning here. Isolate each module. If you see one is bad, pulling the signal low. You found the problem. Diagnose, replace, and reprogram that module. But if the signal is B plus at any one of these modules, check for the, the wiring for an open between that module and the DCL. Remember, DLC, we got here because we had zero volts at pin seven. If we go to the module, K line, in its battery voltage, that battery voltage is not getting to the diagnostic connector. Say it one more time. If we see battery voltage at a module and it's not getting its zero volts at the diagnostic connector, you're going to see a little more complicated circuit while this is going to be really important. Now, as we isolate each one, we check to see. Now, Remember, we can only get this signal if we can communicate. Try to communicate with one module. And if you can communicate with one of them, you'll get this signal. You disconnect it, try to communicate the other one, it tells your circuit's good. If you can never get there, it's not going to solve the problem for you. You've got to have connections to at least one circuit to get this. Isolate each one of these modules. If it never goes low, see if you've got a module that's, that, that, what's going on. You may not be getting good communications. You may have a module shutting you down. If it's hung low, go find out if one of them is hanging you low. This gets to be a little more complicated. You understand why we take time when you see this VW Passat. This is the K line highlighted in blue. Now the stuff we're just talking about becomes very, very important. Any one of these modules can go bad and pull it low. You're going to go have to isolate each one. And bad news is you do not have a junction box, a splice pack, whatever you want to call it, isolating this bus. They're all hooked together. So let's go through how we diagnose something like this. We got a zero volts at the DCL, the data link connector. DLC, I have a hard time saying that. If you have zero volts there, any one of these modules can be pulling it low. Or you could have an open circuit. Go to the most convenient module you can get to and see if you've got 12 volts there. Remember, we have no communications. With no communications, we got to have 12 volts there. Now these modules talk only on command, so go there, see if you have 12 volts. If you do, you've got an open back to the diagnostic connector. If you don't, you got to go disconnect each one of these modules to find out which one is pulling it low. That's the bad news. Diagnostics are simple, as you can see here. The execution of the diagnostic is complex. We keep saying, do not attempt to diagnose this type of situation. With a one-hour diagnostic time, it can't be done. But once you understand the rules of how this circuit works, it can be diagnosed. Now, if you have any questions, go back through and look at this again. Use the space bar to pause the presentation at any spot you want to stop and look at. Make sure you understand something and understand the testing. When you want to continue with a video, hit the space bar again and it'll continue playing. You can back up, watch the whole thing over again. But make sure you understand this. This will get you out of the weeds. It'll help you diagnose even the most complex systems like the Prasat you saw here in front of you.